Hi, I'm Monica Belfast here at FinTech TV and new to the street, and we are so excited to welcome founder and CEO of SagTech Global Limited, Kevin Ang. Great to have you here in New York. Thank you so much, Monica, and yes. thanks for the invitation. Absolutely. Right. What an exciting time. You are at the forefront of your industry with a wonderful new company. Tell me all about SagTech Global. SagTech was established in year 2018 as a technology firm in Malaysia. Okay. And uh, we were listed in year 2025, just seven years, uh, seven years of the company from established to listed. That's, That's what incredible. we feel proud. And uh, we are a software technology company and we develop customization software and we are in an AI tech, we are in a robotic tech and we are also in a point of sale systems for the food and beverage sector. Okay, so you're really doing so many things. Let's break that down for people that aren't as familiar with your company. Um, you, as you said, went global just seven months ago uh, yeah. after you had been already in the industry very short time. So you have big dreams though. You're based in Malaysia, but yes. you have expansion ideas to Southeast Asia. Where else do you want to expand? Actually, after we went public, uh, mm -hmm. we are expanding to Thailand, to Indonesia, Singapore, Vietnam, and Cambodia. My goodness. Yes, thank you. And then we already rolled out the plan of expansion. We already expand to Thailand, actually. And in the next quarter, uh, we already expand into Thailand and Indonesia, actually. Okay. And next quarter, we are planning to the Singapore and also Vietnam. And then beyond that, in another couple of years, two or three years, you would like to obviously come to the U.S. and go in other markets. Walk me through where else do you want to grow to? Actually now, we already collaborate with a, with a U.S.-based company, uh, which is an AI platform um, named Can It Exist. All okay. right. uh, and then we are planning to have them collaborate together with us to expand our product in U.S. Um, the planning will be in second quarter or third quarter of 2026. My goodness. Yes. Okay. And you are able to save companies so much money, literally three quarters of the cost of human workers who are doing the food and beverage industry. Tell me how that's possible. All right. Um, we are entering into the AI robotics. And actually, AI robotics already um, familiar and mature to use in the AI or automotive industry, but not in other industry yet. Okay. In Southeast Asia, actually, there's a huge turnover of the manpower of the staff in food and beverage sector. And with the AI robotics go into the food and beverage sector, we can save um, at least 75, 50 to 75 percent of the uh, manpower turnover of the FMB uh, food and beverage sector. So food and beverage, when it's done with human capital, it's uh, low paid in your uh, part of the world, I understand, and so people don't stay for very long, is that right? Yes, uh, typically yes. In Southeast Asia, that is a low salary and low wages um, works right. in, in food and beverage sectors like waiters and also the server of the food and beverage. So that's why this makes 75% of turnover staff sure. in a food and beverage. And yeah. that kind of churn is so difficult for whoever is leading that company because they're constantly having to replace and interview and uh, you know have new people onboarded. That's very expensive and time consuming. Yes, and also that's, that's also um, not that cost effective. And with our technology, the AI robotics, service robotics, go into the FMB technology, that will help a lot of, to them. So this is technology, as you said, that already exists and is a well-oiled machine in the automotive industry, and now you're going to morph that, or you already are, into food and beverage. Tell me how that works. Yes, precisely. Actually, um, service robotics already very matured in automotive industry. They use uh, service robotics arms to build the cars, to install cars, manufacture the cars, mm -hmm. and even in the medical um, industry, but not in the food and beverage industry. And now we are implementing the robotics arms ah. to yes, robotic arms to the FMB industry and make um, them to replace some of the human resources of the FMB sector. Okay, so you are um, your factories or your actual plants are based where? My actual plants of the manufacture of the robotics arms is based in Taiwan. Okay. Yeah, and software is developed by us, and the AI tech is developed in U.S. Oh, wonderful! What a great collaboration of talent yes. and workforce. I love yes, that. Yes, because we want to choose uh, the best AI technology, which is. Um, 
the world lar the world largest technology uh, firm in U.S. Okay. that's worked together with us to develop the AI technology to implement into the robotics to make it work much more nicely. More efficiently, of yeah, course. Yeah, more efficiently, yes. And it's working incredibly well already for your company. Let's just uh, tell people the specifics. You said you've had explosive growth, and you really mean it. 226% growth in one year? That seems yeah. incredible. Yes, actually, um, as, as per what we just released in our quarter three, our year-over-year -year increase, we have a 226% of the revenue growth. My goodness. Thank you, and that is because um, we have a very efficient um, customer acquisitions plan that uh, because we are selling our point of sale system in SaaS model which is service as software and as, as a service and we have accumulated our customers okay. and it's making us grow from 126% um, uh, last year and this year is 226% surge in our revenue just Q3. Exponentially. It really Thanks. is mind-boggling. That's just incredible. Good for you. Thank you. So how will um, investors or people who are interested in your company be able to chart the milestones? What would they be looking for in the next 12 months or 24 months? Okay, for the next 12 months, actually, we are still planning in the expansions of the our products and duplicate our business model in Southeast Asia. Okay. And we are rolling rolling, rolling out uh, our robotics arms um, in next two quarter, and we roll out our products. And in future, the next three years, we want to conquer like the whole Southeast Asia with all our products. Okay, and you're also moving into ESG platforms. Tell me about that. All right, as what we know. Um, not only in Southeast Asia, but even in Europe, we are talking about the environment and the climate change. Right. And a lot of a lot of the country is now implementing the carbon tax. Mm -hmm. And but a lot of industry, especially like food and beverage industry and other industry, they don't know about how much they will be taxed in the carbon tax. We are we are developing the platform for them to count to to calculate that how much they generate uh, the carbon and how much is actually the carbon tax they're supposed to pay. I see. Yes, and this is actually can work very closely with the government of each country and to educate um, the business and the business owner about the um, carbon tax and also this is related to the environment's um, ESG uh, environment business. Wonderful. Thank and you. I know it's not easy to roll out in multiple countries in a quick order, but it sounds like you've already got many of the approvals of the local governments and the national governments. That's incredible. How is that working? Yes, it's, fortunate, it's really fortunately because um, we went public in U.S. and of course we well known that U.S. has the biggest uh, or the largest exchange and this makes us much much more easy to deal to deal with the government of each country and we get more approval much more easy approval to each country government that's because they feel that uh, when we are a public company we are transparent we have a lot of compliance to follow and uh, we that that makes them much more happy to work together with us. Yes, it's a high-profile rollout, obviously. Yes, correct. Going public in the U.S. at that NASDAQ. Precisely. Exchange. You want to be fully implemented by 2026 and 2027. That's so fast. That's a wonderful goal. Tell me how you're going to do that. Um, that's the first because we want to thanks to our team. And second, we actually have our strategies uh, on the expansion. Not only we implement our own salesperson and our own team, we are also working together with our reseller and distributors in each country. Okay. And that makes us faster to, to implement our products to each country because our distributors and our reseller know their country very well. Mm -hmm, of course. Yes. And so it must be wonderfully exciting but also challenging to find high-level talent in all these places to do such a quick rollout. I'm sure you're finding the best and the brightest. Tell me about your people. All right. Um, actually, yes, like what you say, it's, it's a challenge for us to find the best, to collaborate. And uh, But, yeah, we take that challenge. We interview all our distributors and we train all our distributors and, and the partners to know what is actually our vision and what we want to do in that country. Mm. So that's how we want how, how we deal with them. Good for you. Yeah. So you are from Malaysia. Tell me, how did you get the idea for this company? It seems like a, an amazing um, brainstorm that you had. Where did it come from? All right. Actually, before I start the company in year 2018, um, I worked with a technology company in Taiwan. Okay. In year 2012, 
and I work in a techno work in a technology firm in Malaysia listed company in year 2015. Ah. And 2018, I decide to start my own business. Yes, and we choose the FMB sector technology because we we found that um, a lot of industry they already have the technology implement to their business, but not the food and beverage. So that is the reason we start our technology firm and focus in the food and beverage technology. We call it food tech. So you saw a, a gape, if you will, a gaping area that also could benefit extremely well from AI, and you went for it. That's visionary. Good yes, for you. Yes, yes, correct. And back to seven years ago, um, the AI tech is new, and that is a gap uh, of the food tech in Southeast Asia. There's no one doing that. Mm, incredible. Yeah. So it, it's one thing to have the idea and the vision. Another thing altogether, as you have done, to get the approval so quickly, hire the team, get it in place, and mushroom into this incredible expanded company. So that's quite a bit to pull off in just seven years. What's your goal for the next five or ten years? All right. The first is we, we still want to expand our company. We want to grow the company market cap. That's the first, that's the first thing. And second, actually, we want to, after the Southeast Asia, the next will be in U.S. Okay. We want to bring our company in U.S. We want to bring our product in U.S. and expand to U.S. Wonderful. Yes, and then in the next after five years. that, going global. Precisely. <laughs> yes. I love it. You have yeah. wonderful dreams. The, the reason that we went public is because we want to bring the company to global. Of course. Yes. And we choose to public in U.S. is because we know that that's make us much more easy to, to bring us to global. Okay. One step at a time, but that's a big jump. I like it. Yes. Thank you, Monica. Wonderful. Well, SAG Tech Global Limited, we're going to be keeping an eye out for all the incredible things that you accomplished. CEO and founder, Kevin Eng, thank, thank you for you being so with us. Thank you so much, Monica. Wish you continued success. Thank you.